All right, Valderon against stage, chapter nine, stage 17. Valderon on his own against the boss. Let's see. He makes, he makes it look easy, doesn't he? Look at it, it's absolutely ridiculous. It is ridiculous. He just one taps him without anything else. No other fighters needed, no strategy needed. Just, just Valderon. What's up guys, Ronaldo here and welcome. And as you already saw on the thumbnail, no, this is no clickbait, this is the truth. Valderon is the truth. I think I broke Valderon, not gonna lie, or maybe... No, 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 that's not correct. Valderon broke the game. That That's correct. Valderon broke the game. Some of this footage that you guys are going to see is gonna be mind-blowing, mind-blowing. Uh, it's just crazy. I mean, you already saw from the start how he, he's dealing with chapter 9, right, on his own. But that's not all. That's not all. That's just a small part of his kit. He's gonna... I'm gonna showcase you. <laughs> I... I'm just flabbergasted, what are you gonna see? So I mean, you, I'm gonna showcase you just how much he can deal with one single crit, um, just to see how much damage I'm able to get out with Valderon with one single crit. Uh, and that at A0 guys, at A0. Imagine if you have three soul stones, because most likely you're gonna save up for, for a legendary lord for these soul stones, right? And guess what? A3 ignores 50% of defense, uh, so... <laughs> That's another insane damage steroid as well. But this 5 million damage that you saw is at A0. Um, so there's that. Uh, you're gonna see him also obliterate, completely obliterate AMR. You're gonna see him uh, rinsing guild boss. You're gonna see his survivability, how broken his survivability is. Um, how he's surviving guild boss nightmare 4 without a healer. He's surviving there without a healer because that's how tanky he is. That's right. All he needs for Nightmare 4 to survive is Dolores heals. Dolores heals are enough for him to survive. It is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. On top of that, afterwards I'm gonna showcase you a damage run, like a full damage run in guild boss first. The first one will just to be to be showcasing you guys exactly how much uh, survivability has. Then uh, you will also see a full damage showcase, how much damage I can get out with him, which is also ridiculous. But first, before I go over exactly all this insane footage that I have saved up on him and also the 5 million plus crits, um, <laughs> first let's take a look at his kit and what really makes him so broken. If you exactly know how his kit works, so there are a few avenues that you might not have considered what really make him so broken. Um, but if you did really read through his kit and understand his kit already, uh, go skip this part. Uh, timestamps will be in the description, so you will just be able to time sk skip the video to um, where you want to watch the footage. But yeah, let's go right into first up what kind of what what really makes him so so strong. And it's basically his entire kit overall. It, it just makes him crazy so the thing is that his lord skill what you want to know about his lord skill is he gets a 60% damage boost at 30% HP now the problem I have with most of the chaotic units is that they're not gonna survive at 30% HP they're just gonna die eventually so they can't ever get the full value out of their kit because they can't get the full buff from their lord as gone or uh, as um, Valderon or as their kit suggests, but he can. He can survive with ease at 10% HP. With ease. Because not only does he get a 60% damage boost for the chaotic units, he himself, yeah, when deployed, takes some HP from his uh, allies and deals damage and increases his damage by 30% on top of that 60%. And reducing his damage, here's the key, reducing his damage received by 20%. Each unit 
damaged further increases Valorant's damage dealt by 5% and reduces damage received by another 5%, which means, yeah, you can also stack that three times. So basically you have that in his Lord skill already, right? You have that 60% bonus damage. You have another 30% bonus damage and you have another 45, up to 45% bonus damage, 30% at minimum, up to 35% damage reduction, 35% damage reduction, you have to imagine, and at least at around 25, pretty much. So think of it, the by far strong, <coughs> voice crack, the by far strongest tank set is giving you a 15% damage reduction. And he gets a 25 up to 35% damage, damage reduction up of his Lord skill already. And it just shows why he's so insanely tanky and why he's going to be an absolute monster. But that's not all. That's not all that is key to his insane damage and survivability. His ultimate is basically the uh, same as your did ultimate that can be overcharged. And when it's overcharged, he gets double the um, value and gets physical damage reduction by 20% on the enemies. Now, if he doesn't overcharge it, he still gets at least one stack. One stack is 40% attack and crit damage boost, two, uh, two stacks is 80% attack and crit damage boost. Now 40% at 900 cost. Now here's the thing that comes in. And the chaotic vitality, as you can see, he loses 10% HP. So he self reduces his HP, which is good for him because he's not going to kill himself. He's not going to kill himself. He will survive. He just reduces his HP. So his lore skill gives more benefits and the chaotic annihilation gets more benefits as well. So basically, um, every few attacks like every attack has a 25 percent chance to trigger chaotic annihilation and a 50 percent chance under 30 percent hp and that's a big thing he's gonna be under 30 percent hp most of the time and surviving easily so you have every second hit pretty much him having a 350 percent damage multiplier on his insane attack because if you take a look here he has 6.6k attack and a relatively slow, uh, a quick attack interval, a standard attack interval of 2.6 that you can go uh, get easily down to 1.4, 1.3, right? Now the, the, the big thing, the, the more broken thing, the most broken thing is coming now. Yes, guys, the, his, it's his two passive. So his attack is a normal attack, right? He attacks, then he gets the chaotic annihilation. And so now the most broken thing is, is his two passives. And they, everything in his kit synergizes perfectly. It synergizes perfectly. And the first passive is basically, he's unkillable for three times. If he, he gets a get out of jail card three times, basically. If he's supposed to die, he gets a debuff named Karma the Fallen. And instead of dying, he gets the debuff of reducing his attack and his damage by 15%. This can be done three times during um, until he dies. So he has to has to get that debuff three times, and only then he is going to die. Only then. On top of that, when he uses his ultimate huh, chaotic vitality, um, and he would die five seconds after using his ultimate, he's unkillable overall because he wouldn't get a stack of karma the fallen. He would just be protected. Five seconds after his ultimate, he's just protected from taking any damage, basically any killable damage. And then the big thing here is the, the, the damage reduction is unkillable um, stats. And this, this is ridiculous. Now the damage reduction and his unkillable make it possible for him to be having this up and having low HP all the time, right? And because he has low HP, he has a 50% trigger chance of getting that auto hit. And here's the big thing. When Chaotic Annihilation, that's his uh, talent, the 350% attack, hits a target, it restores 550 extra range. And when an ally on the battlefield dies or retreats, so he gets 30 rage. So basically, 
that's a big thing. Basically, Yuridin has the problem, right? Uh, he wants to get to 200% rage, just like Valdrin can get to 200% rage, but Yuridin um, only gets 50% uh, rage from someone like a Laurel, right? Whereas, uh, and he just doesn't generate enough rage. And this problem is not a problem from Valdron at all. Valdron gets 80% rage immediately from someone like a uh, Laurel because of the 30% extra. And he restores 50 rage per talent hit, per talent hit. Now, 50% of the attacks are gonna be triggered with this talent, so we can calculate. Let's say we have an attack interval, I already did some math, of 1.3. Uh, let's just say we have, a or 1.4, we take our attack interval. If an attack interval of 1.4 and 20 seconds ultimate duration. Now, 20 seconds divided by 1.4 is that he's going to hit around 14 times on average, which means on average he's going to hit seven times chaotic annihilation um, during his ult. Of course, it can be once 10 times, it can be once three times. It's a variation which is going to take the average. So, seven times 50. This is 350 rage restored. Um, through that 350 rage if he hits what like if he hits a few more times it's like three more times it's already 500 rage and then let's say you have a Halloween who restores 1% rage per second right which is 900 900 rage it is another 180 rage plus 350 this is already half of his ultimate is back up without doing anything without doing anything and uh, I tried it you're gonna see it <coughs> when I run this thing his ultimate is basically permanently up the insane amount of regen he has is ridiculous and his DPS uptime is so high his tankiness is so high he will obliterate Guild Wars, he will obliterate Arena um, and also PvP. And in Arena, cost is reduced by 5, so he has a 14 cost. And because he's a Lord, I, for example, if I get him, I have two legendary Soul Stones uh, stored up. I save them. His ultimate makes that, uh, his A1 makes that his ultimate gets procced the second he is deployed for 10 seconds and it doesn't cost him any energy so the first ult deploy once you deploy him it, he immediately gets that chaotic vitality buff now his a2 of course is nice as well and his a3 is crazy crazy he ignores 50 percent of the target's defense during his ultimate it's a silas on steroids at A3. It's a Silas on steroids at A3. And I mean, I only need one more Soul Stone and Valdron, of course, and I would get there. And he would just, I don't know. I really don't know. Deal 300 million damage, maybe, to the guild boss. Easily. <sighs> it is wild. It is absolutely wild how strong he is. He gets another penetration and a more attack speed during when he triggers his talent, which will make him trigger his talent more, which will make him reach and more, which will make him have his ult up more. And he basically has a permanent uptime on his ultimate. It's crazy. And uh, about the gear. Now, enough talking about uh, his kit. Let's go over the gear. And after that, let's go into the battles let's let's really see what this guy is made of so in terms of the gear um let me do it like this real quick so in terms of the gear i think there's basically two options main options that i would recommend which would be the infernal roar and the soulbound arcana both work really well for him and in terms of uh, substats I went for triple crit damage. Why so much crit damage? Because 
Um, I consider this ultimate basically similar to a Xylus ultimate, right? Um, in terms of the defense, how the defense works, attack is broken. So basically, uh, he gets a lot of attack from his ultimate anyways. Plus, if you have a Dolores, he gets even more attack. He doesn't need more attack than he already has. He can just stack crit damage as much as he wants and be a menace, an absolute menace, of course, right? And th this is what I would recommend. I would just recommend cr triple crit damage for, m for most cases. I'd say he's going to be an absolute unit. And as the artifact, Wailing Skull is going to uh, perform extremely well, of course. Now, first up, I want to showcase you guys what exactly I mean with Valderum being unkillable. Just let's see at Nightmare 4 what I mean. Alright, so we're going to place our supports here. They're just going to be here to take care of the shields. They're just going to be here to take care of the shields. So our guy doesn't have to do all of the work on him on his on his own, basically. Alright, so now you can see he takes HP of three of his allies uh, to get his passive and now just take a look at this just take a look at this now he's low HP right he's not gonna die he's not gonna die that's the crazy part about him and then he has his ult again. And pop these ultimates, right? Then we're gonna put Laurel in here. We use Elo in here as our rate region, and he has his ult again immediately. And he's on low life all the time. He's not dying. He's simply not dying. And he. <laughs> It's crazy with it. Now you can see once his ult ended, he's already at 60% um, of his rage cap immediately. And he barely takes damage as you can see because of his damage reduction and his ult is back up again. And he hasn't triggered his karma the fallen once yet. Not once it has been triggered. That's the crazy part so far. And now Meteorite Impact is coming in. And he's just standing there menacingly, right? And he's not dying, he's refusing to die. Then his ult is up again. And he's like, there we go. Use our Laurel again. And his ult is up again. And he barely takes damage. He barely takes any damage. And if you want to, right, you can just wait, 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 and then pop his ult. This way you can time his ultimate and the Karma the Fallen um, stacks won't be applied whenever there's a damage instant coming, right? Whenever there's damage coming, you can just time his ult together with for a Karma the Fallen and be able to just um, therefore not get the debuff not have him die at all and just time his ultimate this is what we're gonna do here now for example let, let me show you exactly what I mean so we will wait now for the next attack of the dragon this is never gonna kill I mean, look at him. 
Look at him. He's just tanking it with El Dolores that he's healing him. He doesn't need anyone. He doesn't need anyone. He doesn't take any damage. Look at him. It is ridiculous. He doesn't take damage. And now we let's just pop his ult because we can. It is absolutely ridiculous. He doesn't take any damage whatsoever. Now he's going to die. There we go. We, this is the thing. And this is something I want to showcase you guys here. As you can see, he survived the whole fight, the whole guild boss fight with only having with always being around 10% HP with only having one unit to heal him. And look at this damage, absolutely ridiculous. This isn't with a meta team comp, by the way. Huh? This isn't with proper anything, with proper timings, proper uh, buffers, anything. It is literally just him, him and him, three DPS. That's it. And he just does not die. And um, I can show you something real quick. Uh, that can help you actually get more damage because I could have done a lot more damage in this run Could have done a lot more damage and that is That you can actually take a look here. Um, like I said you the karma the fallen will not be applied um, To him When he uses his ultimate at the same time as he would die now here is something that you can check. You see these three lightning balls, balls on top of him. This is basically his uh, bonus damage, right? The damage he has. And this means he still has three lives to go, right? He has three lives. Once he dies, let's just take away our Dolores. Once he dies, one of these light balls will fall down. So as you can see soon, there you go, he, he died, he self healed himself and now one of these light balls are, is gone, right? Now let's see when he dies again. Uh, there we go, he heals himself again and then another one of these light balls are, is gone and now you can see this is how he has the two debuffs already on him. Now next will be the third, right? This is how you can see it, and this is also how you can just time his ultimate whenever he's about to die, if you want to get the max out of it, of his survivability. It's... But <laughs> having a Dolores for Nightmare 4 as your only healer is ridiculous. At 10% HP he survives, 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 with permanently his ultimate up. Now before we go into the full guild boss run, let's go and take a look at how he performs in the Artifact Material Raid. All right, stage 18, artifact material, <laughs> artifact material raid, Valderan against the world. Let's see how well he performs. He got his ultimate already up, which is why we're going to trigger it. And he hits like a truck. 900k crits 900k crits <laughs> it is ridiculous it is absolutely ridiculous 900k crits just like that enemy is gone 31 seconds 31 seconds that's not a Silas with a domination buff guys keep that in mind that is not a Silas with a domination buff that's just a Valderan on his own now it is about time to showcase you guys the 5 million damage crit that you saw in the thumbnail. So this is going to be the lineup that we're using Sorry for that. And uh, we are going to try to get uh, many things going at once. So basically, we want to have bleed up. We want to have uh, Dursa's uh, damage increase. We want to have uh, Twin Fiends increase, Dolores. 20% uh, from her as well, from Laurel as well, and defense down as well. So we will have a bunch of stuff stacked up on top of each other. Problem is a bit the timing, but I um, am going for here for record numbers, right? I'm going for record numbers. So we're gonna start off by just putting a few of our units down here, uh, like that. 
and then followed up by our welder and after we place the first three units down here he's going to chain them up place down Dolores so he gets Invic buff morale buff is also in there and interestingly enough we want to keep Valderan at full HP for now uh, you will see why that is the case soon um, but for now we will keep him full life and we will have to use our hollow here um, to have him full HP because this way when he ults when Dursa ults He's still full HP and Tursa can detect uh, a lot of HP from him and give him a huge damage increase, right? Which we're gonna do. And now uh, he's roaring because he thinks he is someone, right? Um, but he's truly not. Um, there we go. Now we take her out, put her in. Pop ult, pop ult, pop ult, pop ult, ult. Ult, deduct his HP. There we go. Now let's see. One, one million with normal hits. Ah, oh, I didn't see it. We had to watch the replay. Five million something, right? Five million something, but the Dursa didn't work. Ah, oh, Dursa, come on. Okay. Man, I tried it so many times with Dursa, it just doesn't work. But basically, if you get the Dursa buff on top of it, uh, he will deal even more than that. But there we have it. Uh, five million damage uh, with one rotation. With one single damage rotation of our boy here. All right, guys, quick interrupt. I tried it again without Dursa, and Dursa did actually work. Without Dursa, he did 4.4 um, million damage uh, with one crit, and with Dursa, 5.3. So he did work. Um, I mean, 4.4 is still huge, right? Um, but basically, why is that not a 50% difference in damage from 5.3 to 4.4, right? Because he gives a 50% damage increase, right? Uh, the reason for that is because when I don't use Dursa, I don't, might not have the 50% damage increase from Durza, but I have the uh, damage increase from Laurel, so I didn't, uh, which I didn't even think of, right? Because uh, if I use Durza's ultimate, his ultimate will overwrite uh, Laurel's 20% uh, damage increase with a 50% damage increase. Um, without Durza, it's a 20% damage increase. With Durza, it's a 50% damage increase, which is why it's 4.4 million without him and with him 5.3, just for clarity. But yeah, as you can see, guys, <laughs> it's absolutely crazy uh, the numbers that you can get out of it. And uh, don't worry, you can get easily multiple million of damage without a team dedicated to get a, a high crit uh, as well. But now let's get into the next part of the video. All right, so this is gonna be the team that we are going to use for our boy Valderon to make the most out of him. And there's quite a few avenues that I did to optimize exactly his damage output for the guild boss. Because like you saw before, um, when I only use Dolores, he um, survives until the end, but he gets these Karma the Fallen stacks, right? Um, which reduces damage by quite a significant number. Of course, you can time your ultimates uh, with the same time as the meteorite strike hits, um, which is what is going to kill him in the end, or which is what is going to apply the Karma the Fallen stacks. The thing is, um, then you have to wait with your ultimate, which is also not optimal, right? You want to pop your ultimate immediately. Um, so you also lose out on damage this way. Uh, but since we use Halloween, we could use her ultimate uh, to extend her range uh, whenever he's low life and um, let him survive like this. This would be an option or her wood elf um, so he doesn't get any karma the fallen stacks as well. So this is another option that works and uh, to have him low life most of the time but sometimes old with Halloween. But then it takes away a lot of his uptime, a lot of his um, rage regen as well when he's at high HP, right? We want him to be as much of low HP as well. So I also was playing around with um, using the Elowin, getting his ult, uh, HP back up, right, when he's low. And then as soon as his HP is back up, I take his HP down again with um, 
um, Durza and give him a damage boost. So he is um, just really shortly in higher HP. But there is one better way to do it and that is simply by putting a Volca on the field and giving him the lifesteal. Like the lifesteal from Volca um, is gonna be helping you a lot. And the thing is Volca is not like completely unusable, right? She has some vulnerability anyways. So you can get some uh, value out of her as well, right? On top of that, I have her in, um, in an Invic set for our boy. And then the team works basically like this. It's quite in depth. I did a lot of different th uh, ideas. What, what, what are you doing with this double lord setup, Ronaldo? What's going on here? Well, well, well. Um, so basically, the, <laughs> the Elowen is here for the rage. Uh, Valoran is the core unit. Um, Hex is our secondary DPS. Uh, you could uh, change it for a Setrem or a Silas as well, right? Or someone else. But Hex is our secondary DPS. Sogak is our bleed applier. Uh, you can use any other bleed applier uh, as a fighter as well. It uh, works as well. And with the lifesteal from Volca and the healing artifact from the fighters will be fine. Then we have Laurel also for Rage. We have Volca A1 also for Laurel. We have <coughs> Astrid uh, for her insanely strong defense reduction of 30%. That's huge. Then we have um, Twin Fiend to give our Dolores higher base stats, of course. And not only that, but also um, to have uh, Focus Fire and to have, where do we have it here? Uh, there we go, Vulnerability applied of 25%. So this is another vulnerability to just get the max out of Valderon. So this is the pure Valderon God comp, basically. I just they're all here for Valderon, other than Hex, they're all here for Valderon. You can get an even higher uh, with an A5 Silas, for example, if you put an A5 Silas in, instead of Hex, Valderon will deal more damage as well, right? Um, but we're just gonna play it like this, because I don't want to use any Awakenings on the test server on uh, heroes that I don't have. Um, dupes off. And yeah, it's gonna be an A0 Valderon. Uh, I think most of you guys, if you pull him, you will get him easily to A1 with the soul stones, maybe to A3. Like I have three soul stones saved up. If I would get him, I wouldn't have him at A3, <laughs> which would be huge. But uh, this is gonna be the lineup. It's it's quite a, uh, a juicy, a juicy. Uh, it's uh, interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, just take a look. Just take a look for yourself. Uh, you'll see how I do things. <clears throat> so. Uh, we skip to the boss, right? And we just place down our DPS here, our Hex, then her, then we place down our Sogek, place down our Valdron, place down our Aloin like this, so she cannot heal Valdron. We place um, Volca like this, so she gives Invic buff on Valdron. On top of that, uh, she is able to hit the boss as well. So this is gonna be the Volca placement, okay. Um, the artifact from Valdron triggered, so we cannot place her yet. Uh, then we place down Twin Fiend uh, right here. We place down Elowin, uh, Elowin. Um Laurel right here. We place down these units like that. And now you might be th wondering, um, Ronaldo, there's only there's zero spots left. What are you talking about with Volca? Well, hold on. See the Twin Fiend ultimate is gone. There we go. And we pop our Laurel. And now, since the Twin Fiend is gone, we put in Pyros. Because Twin Fiend and Pyros, they both have the morale set here. Uh, so to puff our team up as well. And we want to have the morale set active all the time. And the morale set uh, can have as terrible stats as it, uh, you want. It doesn't matter. It's just here for the morale boost, right? And then we have another um, ultimate from the Lord for more... Uh, damage here as well and then we have again <laughs> Valder note and now as you will be able to see Pyrus uh, Shred will be gone in a sec uh, right and when Pyrus Shred is gone we just pop Volca and the Shred is on again so we have consistent uptime on the vulnerability pretty much with this comp and also we have uh, bleed we have we have everything we have everything we have defense down, literally everything. 
pop our um, our boy Pyros. We take him out in a second. Take him out. Reason being, we want to put in uh, Laurel. Uh, we will pop him. We will wait for the damage increase for Laurel. Do this, then get in Twin Fiend. So we still have a morale set going again and an ultimate from Twin Fiend as well for more damage. And it, as you can see, it's just, <laughs> it is an interesting comp. You basically have always zero deployable, right? It's a region comp. Um, it's a cycling comp uh, where you cycle literally every single unit, right? It's not just you have one deployable and then you put Leia then you take Leia out, you put Laurel and so forth. No, you always use all of the units uh, to the max of your potential, of course. Now, as you can see, Valderon ult is up again. We can put um, our Volca ult as well for some shredding. Um, we will wait with our Pyrus a bit uh, since Volca ult is going. Now we pop Pyrus because Laurel is about to come up. Uh, it's a hectic fight, as you can see. And he's gonna, he's, he's rinsing, he's rinsing. Um, you can see a bunch of crits for a million plus and stuff from our boy Valderon. Uh, we're gonna wait. We're gonna place her down. We're gonna wait here for um, for Valderon's ultimate until uh, because his ultimate is gonna be up soon anyways. And then after his ult is gone, there we go. Ult popped. Now we pop Laurel. Now we place Pyrus. And I, I can show you the gear of all the units as well. I did some interesting stuff there as well. And look at these debuffs that are applied all these times. <laughs> a full debuffing team. We have um, our Dolores up again. And he should be up again as well. Well, they run immediately. Uh, 92%. The fraud. And as you can see now, Volca applies the, the vulnerability. It's a consistent vulnerability application. Um, we will wait for the Laurel. Uh, Laurel is going to be up in five seconds. We will uh, let the Pyrosol run through. Uh huh. Now we can now already take him out in a second. There we go. We can pop her. We will wait with the Laurel until we pop our Valderon ult. Pop Valdi. Come on, Valderon. His like the most time. The the biggest problem is that Valderon's ultimate takes so long. Like his animation is like Rah! for a half an eternity. Pop uh, twin fiend. Um, like this is, takes a lot of uptime actually from him. And now we wait with the Volca until twin fiend's ultimate is finished, uh, which is right now. So we're gonna pop Volca now for the vulnerability. We have ult up again on Valderon, consistently up pretty much. And we have consistent vulnerability as well. As you can see, our boy um, is up again. And it's just consistent debuff after debuff stacking. It is crazy, it is crazy. Of course, these debuffs are not always up, which means there is a, a bit of um, RNG as well, depending on how much the debuffs are up, you're gonna deal a few million more or less. But uh, from my testing, it, it was pretty much always the same number from Valderon in the end, like literally identical. So I don't think it's gonna make a much of a difference in the end. The average over such a long period of a fight will be still the same. And you will see, all right, we're entering to the 50 million mark. Keep in mind, we're basically just, we're not trying to make a comp dealing as much blood as possible. We're, make, we're making a comp uh, dealing as much damage with Valderon as possible. So th this is our uh, plan here. Uh, keep that in mind. So, and again, and as you can see, he didn't lose any stacks uh, of his uh, HP. Um, he's always at one HP, as you can see, and he didn't get one Karma the Fallen debuff. And there we go. That's pretty much a fight done and dusted. You can just pop this once more and one more of these. And that's it. Uh, 54,000 blood. And let's see about Valderon. How much did A0 Valderon uh, do? How much did he do? Now, A0, keep that in mind. I don't think there is one unit at A0 that deals that much damage. Look at it. 
Boom. Yeah, it's always a pretty much exact. It was four, like four or three. Yeah, no, th three times now in a row where he did 220 million. So with this comp, 220 million uh, from Valderon alone. And he was basically just him, right? It's just him. The whole comp was around him. And as you can see, he is him. At a zero, at a zero, 220 million. That is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And uh, I want to show you guys that this uh, the gear I have is also actually quite nuts. Look at it. This is extremely good gear. Uh, triple um, crit damage because he gets a lot of AD as well, right? He has a lot of attack damage anyways, so he doesn't need that much more attack damage, which is why I went for triple uh, crit damage. Um, <coughs> Wailing Skull, and he out damaged our Capris of Sutra, or the Sutra of Capris uh, Hex. Of course, Hex has a bit of a different lineup here. He has more attack and less uh, crit damage, but he out damaged the Hex. Of course, Hex awakenings are absolutely crazy right and hex with usually with an erica skyrockets in damage but a zero and then um a few things here um where do we have it for example uh doo -doo -doo -doo. there we go pyrus uh as you can see here pyrus morale set just some random pieces just some random pieces i took not good rolls at all as you can see I just took a morale set on him, same for Twin Fiend and the Spellcaster's Echo, so he gets his ultimate as fast as possible. It really isn't about Pyrus' damage, it is about Pyrus buffing uh, a Valdron. And the others, pretty much all, they have um, an Invic set, like most of the supports. Then we have Sargek, uh, he has this gear, um, pretty stable, pretty stable, not a lot of attack, unfortunately, um, but he has some defense shred anyways, and his Spirit Siphon. And another DPS, do we have another DPS in the comp? No, I think not. We have Twin Fiend, um, who is also with a morale set. And as you can see, it doesn't matter. Just for the morale bonus, I have him in there. Um, and then we have our core unit, actually. Astrid, Astrid, amazing unit. She has decent gear, not a lot of attack, actually. Really little attack, but a lot of bonus stats here as well. Um, uh, she has decent gear for sure. I gave her a lot of attack speed. I gave her attack speed um, amulet as well because I wanted to get her um, attack as low as possible because again it wasn't about her dealing damage. Uh, also this for her survivability uh, because she wouldn't survive because she doesn't have a healer to heal herself, right? Um, and where do we have it? Skills. Because we would just have a 30% chance to get the defense down for 5 seconds. So we want just to as much attack speed so she has um, as high of a chance to get that defense down in there. Uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. This is pretty much it about the guild boss and uh, about the Valderon itself. As you can see, he's an absolute unit like hitting for millions with single auto hits, one-shotting bosses on his own, dealing insane damage on guild boss. And the main part that I unfortunately couldn't show you guys here on the test server is the PvP. Because as you saw uh, at the beginning of the video, his survivability is so strong. Which is amazing for PvP. Amazing for Irina, amazing for Guild Wars as well. He's uh, uh, gonna be a menace for, for, for all you guys that uh, face him. Uh, just face him to see how, how you deal with him, how, how strong he is. Because he is two tiled fighter, right? He can be uh, placed behind a tank in Guild Wars and he can survive quite long because of his damage negation that he has. <laughs> it is crazy. He, he goes crazy. Um, of course, in Guild Wars, you would need a healer on him, so you, you wouldn't be able to survive on low HP, but um, in stuff like um, Arena, he's still able to perform on low HP and just rinse, just rinse. And yeah. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Valderon breaks the game, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see. He is crazy. Um, I don't think I promised you too much with my intro. I think you see this guy <laughs> it goes nuts. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Ronaldo. And subscribe so you get a Valderon yourself. And I'm out. Peace.